Using the Chromebook Simulator, I'm Huey Poplock. Are you a longtime Chromebook owner? Then you probably know the basics of Chrome OS. If you're a new Chromebook user, though, the Google's desktop operating system might be a bit of a mystery at times. Thankfully, you can learn to use the Chrome operating system even without a Chromebook by using this simulator. Chrome has long had the Chromebook simulator available, although I don't see it mentioned often, and it's not going to cover every single function. Still, you can learn to use Chrome OS and pick up all of the key functionality pretty easily. All you need to do is fire up a web browser and hit the website. I'll be showing you the simulator using my PC. The simulator provides a menu on the left, gathering up topics in specific groups. But it also shows the most popular Google Chrome operating system topics front and center. So you can start wherever you want, looking through the groups, hitting the top picks, or even searching for a feature. Whichever you decide, I highly recommend clicking the full screen option before using the simulator to learn about a topic. That's because there's a virtual Chromebook that takes you step by step for each function of the lesson. Each walkthrough doesn't just tell you the steps, though. The idea is for you to click the Chrome OS interface on the virtual Chromebook to move through each step. Think of it as a virtual teacher that makes the class actually perform each step on a Chromebook. Technically, you can skip the clicking around by tapping the next button and proceed to the next part of the process for any lesson. But honestly, why would you? The easiest way to learn any new software is to walk through it step by step and actually or virtually use it. And the simulator makes it easy by flashing the interface element you need to click. Overall, I'd say you can learn to use the Chrome OS basics in under 30 minutes using this tool. Sure, there are plenty of advanced features and topics that aren't covered. The simulator doesn't tackle how or why you would want to use Linux on your Chromebook, for example. And some topics need an update as Chrome OS evolves with every four-week software update. The app launcher shown in the simulator isn't the latest version, for example. Then again, the vastly improved Chrome OS productivity launcher just arrived in Chrome OS 100 a few weeks ago. So I'd expect to see the simulator updated accordingly in the near future. Either way, just covering the basics of Chrome OS in this simple, approachable method can be very useful. And since it runs on the web, you can learn to use Chrome OS even if you don't have a Chromebook. Enough of the chatter. Let's take a look at the Chromebook simulator. This is the screen as you go to the website. You'll see on the left are some topics with expanded topics. As you click on each one, the simulator will be in this area and then popular topics in this area down on the bottom. When you click on Get Started, you'll see that there are subheadings under Get Started. We'll start with the first one. We'll get as many done today as we can. We'll finish up next month. Let's take a look at signing in as a guest. It goes to the first step in the simulator and there are five steps. You'll notice over here you can print, but you can also enlarge and go into full screen mode. And that's what we want to do. So let's do it. And there we go. Step one, it shows if you haven't already, sign out of your Chromebook. And then at the bottom right, select the time. Click Next. Then click Sign Out. At the bottom, select Browse as Guest. To sign out of the guest mode, at the bottom right, select the time. You can exit Guest. We'll close out the full screen mode. We'll take a look at add an account. We'll screen it. There are seven steps. You can let other people sign into your Chromebook using their Google accounts. The bottom right, select the time. Then sign out. On the bottom, 
select Add Person. Enter the Google account email address and select Next. Enter the password and Next. Accept and continue. And then follow the on-screen steps and that person can sign in and use your Chromebook and not have access to any of your information. Under Get Started, they'll be setting up your Chromebook, set the date and time, and connect your Chromebook to a monitor. We'll skip those right now. You can do those on your own. You can explore your Chromebook. Use your touchpad. Let's take a look at that because there's some good hints here, some things you can do. Let's full screen. To move the pointer, you move your finger across the touchpad. Using one finger, click and hold the item you want to move. Drag the item to its new spot, then release your finger. To click, press or tap anywhere on the touchpad. With two fingers, to right click, to right click with two fingers, press or tap the touchpad. You can also press Alt and then click with one finger. To scroll, place two fingers on the touchpad and move them up or down to scroll vertically or left and right to scroll horizontally. If you want to move between pages in Chrome, to go back a page you were just on, swipe left with two fingers. If you change your mind and want to go back, swipe right with two fingers. If you want to see all of the open windows, swipe up or down with three fingers. If you have traditional scrolling turned on, you swipe down. And if you have the Australian scrolling turned on, swipe up. Open a link with a new tab. Point to the link, then tap or click the touchpad with three fingers. Switch between tabs. If you have multiple browser tabs open, swipe left and right with three fingers. To close a tab, point to the tab, then tap or click the touchpad with three fingers. And that's it for this section. Top keyboard shortcuts. Let's full screen it so you can see it better. Take a screenshot of your entire screen you click the control key and then the show windows key. To take a screenshot of part of your screen, you press the shift and control, then the show windows key. Then you select and drag over the area that you want to capture. To turn caps on or off, to turn caps lock on or off, hit the search button or the everything button and alt. To lock your screen, hold the search or everything button and the letter L. To sign out of your Google account, shift control Q and then Q a second time. To copy selected text, do a control C, and of course to paste, control V. Open the keyboard shortcuts helper, control Alt and the slash under the question mark will give you the keyboard shortcuts helper. And that's it for that section. Get to know your keyboard. Let's full screen it. You're looking at 
the top row in the simulator, you just tap a highlighted key to see more information. The escape key, stop loading your current page. The next key is back or F1 and that goes to the previous page. Forward is F2, go to the next page. Refresh is the circle and that refreshes your current page. To full screen, you click the next item. It could be F4 if you're on a standard keyboard. Show windows or F5 that shows all of your open windows. Six turns the brightness down. The next turns the brightness up or makes it brighter. The next is mute. Volume down is the one to the right of that and then volume up. And finally, on some keyboards, you may have a power switch on that last button. And you can go down the rest, set up your virtual desktops, set up Google Assistant, change your language, and change your background wallpaper. Let's set up Google Assistant. At the bottom right, select the time. Then select your settings or gear button. On the left, select search and assistant. In the search and assistant section, select Google Assistant. Turn on Google Assistant. Use your Google Assistant with your voice and turn on, and I'm not going to say it in case it will activate some people's computers or phones, and I don't want to do that. But if you say that term, it will, and turn that on, it will work on your Chromebook. If you want to use your voice instead of the keyboard, turn on preferred input. To talk with your assistant, say, okay, G. And as a tip on your keyboard, you can also press the search button plus A or the assistant key. Then say a command or ask a question on how do I change your volume? And you're done with this section. To use your apps, there are several choices there. You can install Android apps, find an app, put apps in folders, pin apps to your shelf, take a photo or a video, create drawings and uninstall apps or extensions. Let's take a photo or a video. Again, we'll full screen. In the corner of your screen, select the launcher. Select the up arrow. Open the camera. To take a photo, tap the take photo. To set a three or a 10 second timer, select the timer. To record a video, select video. To start recording, hit the little red button. To see all the photos and videos you've taken, in the bottom right hand corner, select the thumbnail of your most recent photo or video. And you're done. Now you can take a photo or a video on your Chromebook. Let's do the uninstall apps or extensions next. There are 12 steps here. Step one, to remove an app from your Chromebook, select the launcher. Select the up arrow. Right click the app you would like to remove, then tap uninstall. You'll get another dialog box and you want to click uninstall there. To uninstall an extension, 
open Chrome. At the top right, select the more the three dots. Select more tools and then extensions. Choose the extension you would like to remove and then tap remove. And then tap remove once again. To remove an extension that's a button on the browser toolbar, right click the button. Tap remove from Chrome. And then tap remove once again. And you're done. Now you can uninstall apps and extensions on your Chromebook. This is the end of part one of the Chromebook simulator. Next month, we'll have part two. I'm Huey Poplock.